Now that we've talked about the abstract construction of dummy variables and how to incorporate them into our regression, I want to actually discuss how about doing how you would go about doing that in R. And I'm going to use a running example that we've had from previous modules where the data that we have comes from a nationally representative sample of American citizens who were asked about their support for President Bush leading up to the 2004 Iraq War. And I'm starting to realize that this is uh, quite a dated example because many of you were probably just infants when this was taking place. But nevertheless, I still think this is useful in the sense of showing how we may be interested in seeing how different levels of variables have different effects. So what we wanna know is whether or not there's a difference in support between younger and older respondents, and we're gonna control for partisanship. Our response, again, is gonna be the support for President Bush before entering uh, the Iraq war and our quantitative predictor is going to be partisanship. We will then change age because in the original data set it's also a quantitative variable but we'll change it into a categorical variable where we're differentiating between individuals between 18 and 53 and those above the age of 53. So just to kind of motivate our example and again there's going to be a little bit of a surprise because I want you to continually be thinking about how all of these different elements in regression analysis are connected. So when we're talking about a correlation statistic or correlation coefficient, that's inherently related to what we're doing in linear regression. And it's no different than doing like an ANOVA because remember when we did ANOVA, that's just an analysis of variance and that's essentially giving us a F test or even a partial F test. So they're just different ways of triangulating the data and looking at it to see, again, how our explanatory variables help explain variation in our outcome. So again, just to start, I'm going to motivate this by doing a correlation coefficient just between party ID and support for the Iraq war to see how they co-vary. And when we look, we see that we get a correlation coefficient of approximately and we get a correlation coefficient of approximately 0.72, which we can interpret as uh, party ID helps explain about 72% of the variation in uh, support for Bush. And not only do we see that we have a strong correlation, we can see that our test statistic is quite large, which results in a small p-value so we have strong statistical confidence, right, that we can reject the null, that there is no relationship between the two variables. We can also try to model this relationship using a linear relationship. So we'll execute our linear model using LM and R with Bush support as our outcome and party ID as our main covariate. We can then see that we get an estimated coefficient of approximately 0.1. 1.4, which we can interpret as a one unit increase in party ID leads to approximately an increase of 0.14 in support for Bush, so 14% increase for President Bush. Now, I want you to take a look at this table for a second, and I'm going to ask which of the following statements is correct, and then I'll leave some time to go through each of these to explain why only one of these is correct. So at the end of reading through these, I want you to pause and actually think and give a good reason for why only one of these answers is correct. So the first statement is the p-value is below 0 0.001. So beta 1 for party ID does not equal 0. Therefore, there's no association between party ID and support for the Iraq war. Second, support for the war of 51% of people can be predicted accurately by party ID. Third, with a unit increase in support for the war, the average person is more likely to be 0.14 points more conservative. And last, the correlation between party ID 
and support for the war is approximately 0.716. So since the correct answer is D, I'm going to work my way from the bottom up. Now, if you can just look at the brute calculation, right, we have an R squared value, which again, is a construction of our residual sum of squares as well as our total sum of squares, which is influencing our correlation coefficient if we're just looking at two different variables. And so don't ever forget that if you just have a bivariate regression, your R squared value is literally, if you just take the square root of it, just your correlation coefficient, the amount of variance that your predictor, in this case party ID, explains in your outcome, in this case support for Bush. Moving on to C, the correct way to say this would be a unit increase in party ID is associated with a 0.14 increase in support for the war. So it's worded backwardly. I think the reason for why B is incorrect is self-evident based on my response for why D is the correct answer. So the way that we interpret the R squared value is that party ID, because it's our only predictor, helps explain about 51% of the variation in our outcome. It does not mean that 51% of people, that we can predict accurately only 51% of people. And for A, the first part is true, right? The p-value is very low, and the second part is true, so beta 1 does not equal 0, but that means that there is some association between party ID and support for the Iraq war. And specifically, it's a positive association. 